In a press conference, the director of the Coralina Environmental Corporation denounced acts of vandalism in the Johnny Key Regional Park. Among the incidents is the theft of the delimitation buoys. Rechazamos. Different acts of vandalism have been occurring in the Johnny Key Regional Park. For example, the theft of the electric cable that conducts the current to the bathroom's pump. What these acts do is to set back all the services that we are trying to offer to the tourists and residents that go to Johnny Key. Acts such as the theft of the buoys that demarcate the Baylor Zone and the entrance of the boat to Johnny Key, which is to streamline the process and to provide boarding and disembarkation services to ensure the physical integrity of the bathers since the demarcation is to minimize the risk of physical contact of tourists and boats arriving at Johnny Key Regional Park. The director states that the buoys that were installed and stolen were part of a contingency plan to guarantee the park services to all visitors and residents. Not only does it harm Janiki Regional Park, but it also harms the entire industry, the tourism sector, the tourists, the visitors, and the boatmen that transport visitors to the park. I had taken the decision to close the park because the landing did not meet the minimum conditions without the buoys, but instead we opened the park. We installed the buoys to ensure continuity in the service and the process was not interrupted, but with agility we installed the buoy and continue with the service. The director of the corporation announced that they are studying the possibility of putting permanent surveillance at the place, as well as installing security cameras to prevent this type of incident to repeat in the regional park. The National Register Office has announced in the last hours that there are almost a million ID cards in the backlog. For this reason, it calls on citizens to claim their documents. A total of 992,228 ID cards have not yet been claimed in the Registrar's Office headquarters in the National Territory. Of these, 494,151 are citizenship cards and 498,077 are identity cards that were processed for the first time or a duplicate was requested. The National Civil Registrar's Office calls on Colombians to go to the entity's premises to claim their identity documents, especially their citizenship cards so that they can participate in the elections for the Congress of the Republic on March 13th and for the elections for President and Vice President of the Republic on May 29th of 2022. And the Departmental Delegation of San Andres of the National Register Office informed that those people selected to be jurors for the March 13th elections and need to reinforce information or clarify doubts about the electoral processes may be trained in the facilities of the departmental government from 2 to 4 in the afternoon and from 4 to 6 likewise. And in other news, the department shines with its presence at the representatives and wholesalers fear Rema in the city of Cali. The people who were part of the delegation from the islands returned satisfied. The archipelago could not miss the Rema Fear in the city of Cali, a global space that brings together tourism professionals and the leading fear of unbound and outbound markets in the southwestern Colombia. It is attended by international exhibitors and tourism offices. The island were present, and according to the Secretary of Tourism, Jonathan Tiela, they were able to interact with large operators and wholesale agencies. After the participation of the department in the 41st version of the announcement, showcase the delegation of San Andres had the fortune to participate in the Rema Fair where we were able to interact with important tour operators and wholesale agencies of the Colombian Southwest and the department's delegations returned to San Andres very happy very optimistic that the work of promoting the destination will bear fruit and will continue to maintain ourselves as a favorite destination for nationals and internationals and the new Secretary of Health to lead this office under Governor Everett Hawkins Chagrin was sworn in today. This is the Raisal Etelianek Castro Manuel, a lawyer from the Gran Colombia University and specialist in administrative law. The governor of the island sent her a message and talked to her about the challenge she faced in this office. <laughs> 
We are giving position to the health secretary who will replace Dr. Julian Davis in the governor's office was presented the right side Ethel Yanet Castro who takes possession as health secretary. According to the decree 0104, the right side represented or presented are the required documents. She takes possession not without first telling her of the challenges of this process that she has already been part of. The challenges we have with the departmental social state enterprise. Since it must follow the process of strengthening and design to invest in the hospital, what in 15 years has not happened? The new secretary has extensive experience in the handling of civil labor, administrative, and the constitutional law, and now joins the government team from All for a New Beginning and continues to meet the goals and projects of the island's health. And the Minister of Health modifies the guideline of Resolution 777 and establishes recommendation for non-use of face masks in open spaces in municipalities with a coverage of more than 70%. Resolution 350 of 2022 was published today where the Ministry of Health and Social Protection established modifications in the biosecurity guidelines, taking into account the non-obligatory use of face masks in open spaces in territories with vaccination coverage greater than 70%. This administrative act, which modifies Resolution 777, seeks to adopt the general biosecurity protocol for all economic, social, cultural, and public administration sectors. Hermanes Escobar, Vice Minister of Public Health and Service Provision, said the following. Today, Resolution 350 is issued, which modifies Resolution 777 that will contain the new modification of the use of face masks as we announced last week due to the epidemiological behavior of the pandemic with a decrease in cases, deaths, and hospitalization. In addition to the increasing vaccination coverage, the epidemiological committee recommended the non-use of face masks in open spaces in municipalities that already have 70 percent of full vaccination coverage. The vice minister reminds the community that in case of any respiratory symptoms they should take the appropriate measures and wear a mask. The recommendation is made in the case of any respiratory symptom. It is recommended to wear a mask and isolate according to the protocol. In the case of people with comorbidity or risk factors it is recommended to wear masks. All persons with any risk factor within Resolution 350 are recommended to wear a face mask at all times. It should be noted that the community should maintain self-care and not forget to wash their hands frequently. And now we continue with news on the Municipality of Full Providence and Santa Catalina. Good evening to everyone. This is the most relevant information from Old Providence and Catlina. The Verlas Islas Oversight Group, which was created to monitor the reconstruction of the department, formally filed a criminal complaint against the mayor and the planning secretary. Yesterday, the former governor and legal representative of the Oversight Ver Las Islas, Alvaro Archibald, published in a blog, Quita Sueños, the formal complaint that was made to the Attorney General of the Nation, where they denounced the mayor and the Secretary of Municipal Planning for corruption of voters and misappropriation. According to the publication, the criminal complaint with priority is based on apparent events that occurred on February 8th of this year, 11 days after the restriction established in the law of guarantees came into force, in which the Secretary of planning call different persons to be hired to commit them to vote for a certain candidate. As clearly and unequivocally expressed by the official, the purpose of the meeting was to commit them to support a political program until 2023 by voting for the candidate to the House of Representatives for the Archipelago Department of San Andres and Old Providence, Jorge Mendez Hernandez, who belongs to the political party Cambio Radical. According to the complaint, the actions of the public servants distorted the essence and nature of the contracts and orders for provision of services to hire people for their qualities, skills, and knowledge to support the management of the municipality. The brief also mentioned. This is a criminal enterprise in which the mayor promotes to gather with the different office secretaries electoral corruption against the protected legal interests, which is none other than the free and autonomous right to vote, fundamental pillar of the democratic system of government. Finally, the oversight by Las Islas ends up confirming that the mayor would be the alleged perpetrator and the secretary of planning would be the alleged direct perpetrator. 
And on the other hand, the socialization of a project for the installation of a solar park in the municipality has left the community with doubts as to who are the real beneficiaries. Community members expressed their concern about a project named Eco Parque Solar Providencia, which was informed about in different places. Although they liked the idea, the attendees explained that the project would not directly benefit the community. The biggest concern is that this solar eco park is going to be installed in the municipality, but it turns out that it will not be of any direct benefit to the end user, that is to us. The benefit will be practically for the company that is managing the energy here. The project will be generated at least a 24 cent of the Quran that we consume during the daytime as a fourth. Excellent. But that benefit is not going to be total for us. It will be for Sopesa because the light bill that we pay in will come in just as same. Although the Grand High Ecologica, the Parque Ecologico, is not going to consume fuel and they're going to have less, less personnel, still it do represent a benefit economically to the family them who are going to use the service. Several attendees believe that there are better ways to carry out the project that seeks to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Not stop the project, let's do it differently. We have the experience in the past where we had people who had on panel solar on the house, they work with the freezer and part they work with the house and they give surplus current during the day. The light bill even should be, be affected. It helps the environment and it helps the family economy. Most of the investment comes from Ecopetrol Company and USAID. The project by the Ministry of Energy will have a value of about $9 million. This is all the information we have for tonight for the section of Old Providence and Catlina. Continue in San Andres with more Teleis. Last news. Good night. Thank you, Emilia. Now it's time for Sports News with Victor Fusalba. <laughs> Hello, here are the best sports of the island. And this time with a great start of the baseball tournament in the under 22 category. In a great baseball afternoon that began at the Hino Archibald's Baseball Stadium, the Rays and the San Luis team played a great game. A game that went to extra inning and the San Luis won by one run difference. Six to five was the final of the game. This is what Sheldon Grinard told us. We play against Rays, we had a difficult game. Well, we, we stay tight, went too hard, we went to and two, we got extra innings. Well, the pitcher got get on, uh, well, we do the best, and in the last innings, I the and I made the effort to win the game. Well, it feels good because, like, we don't know if we start with the right foot, but we have to get better, we have to practice and get in a condition and get a nice attitude because we come, come represent San Andres in the sub-22. Attitude and spirit of the players and fans who came to the stadium to enjoy an afternoon of baseball with the best of the Sport. Another sporting event to benefit the department is the under 22 baseball tournament that integrates amateurs and young baseball players of the department, according to Grinard. On another scenario, looking to provide opportunity in football, the departmental league and some coaches begin their training process for women's football. Seeking to provide opportunities for women in soccer, the Departmental League and some coaches began their training process for women's soccer in the islands. Taking into account that women's soccer is a sport that has been growing worldwide and in Colombia already has professional participation. The Insular Department also wants to empower the girls so that they can open doors to a promising future in women's soccer. The girls have already begun this process of integration and participation, as Maria Fernanda Gutierrez told us. Maria Fernanda Gutierrez sends our message. So I am also a soccer lover. With these teams that we are forming now, which is not very common in women, we're encouraging many girls to join this team so they can play, have fun, and most of all, in a healthy coexistence environment. We want and we ask the help of several teachers and people to also encourage the girls through the media. April Mendoza also spoke to us. Estoy aquí porque la verdad me gusta el fútbol. 
I like soccer. These days, we are not seeing women's soccer, but rather men's soccer. I would like them to support us with the other girls so that they can be active in teams like ours, so that we can be in a professional team, and that also serves us as a support for work and things like that. And this is Island Sports for tonight. We will see you on another broadcast. We continue with Lisa.